Okay, um, I'm back with some more kitchen tips. And one thing I'd like to talk about is uh, gadgets. A lot of cooks, like me, tend to collect gadgets. And some of them are useful and some of them sit in a drawer. The most useful one I have is this thing. It's a pot scraper and I use it for a lot of stuff and it washes right off and I should probably have more than one because they do get dull after a while but I get these at the um, Amish store in Unity called the Community Store. They're closed on Thursdays and Sundays and Wednesday mornings they have Wicked Good Donuts and <laughs> we went there once and got some donut uh, they were like the, the parts in between the circle, you know, the scraps. And we ended up eating like the whole box one day. So we never went back and got donuts again because neither one of us could use that many carbs at once. But they are good if you want to go and have a good metabolism. I think they have them on Saturday morning too. I think they have maple ones on Saturday as well as the regular glaze. So it's the big community store in Unity. It's a gorgeous drive um, in between you know, Waterville on the coast. So, um, if you're out that way, there's some great views on that drive and lots of cool stuff at the general store. Lots of gadgets and this, this is like under a buck. So, get a pot scraper. And this is a, a cute little knife and look, I nicked it. I, when we got here, I don't know what that is that was on the counter when I got here. Um, I couldn't find a can opener. I left it at the old apartment. I think Robert was sleeping there because it was close to work and he was, it was just more convenient a couple nights for him to stay there and go to work. And I was trying to set up here and I had opened a can and I got this um, knife at the grocery store because a lot of my knives were still at the other place. And I used it to open a can and I nicked it. But it's a, it's one of, I think it's an OXO. Yeah, it's an OXO Good Grips. It says it on there. Oxo Good Grips, and it's just small. See, it's not that much bigger than my fingers. So it's a good, good little knife. It's very, very sharp, and he sharpened it for me and tried to get the nick out. But you know, it was like a five dollar, six dollar knife, so I'm not too concerned. Um, the other thing is keeping like your dish rags and things clean, and um. I don't have a lot of experience working in restaurants, but I was a waitress for a week once. <laughs> that was about all I could hack of being a waitress. And they would keep their um, countertop rags in a, in a bucket with like 10% bleach. And uh, at the end of the day, they'd throw them all in there. And, and next morning, they could pull out a new one. So I'm like, I have these old dish rags. I have to go get more at one of the... I usually go to like Dollar Tree or I don't know, a big box store if I can stand going in it, but I don't really care for Walmart. And so anyway, this is, just has like a little cap full of bleach and some of this Fabuloso, which I get at the IGA. <laughs> and I think I bought it because it's called Fabuloso. You know, like that, that girl on Two and a Half Men that went, she was Charlie Sheen's girlfriend really funny really funny actress young very pretty but she she was very comedic and one one episode she was saying chimichanga and she was just going chimichanga and we laughed so hard at that that was the funniest thing I'd seen in a long time I don't know why it just tickled my funny bone but so I have some fabuloso <laughs> and it's good for floor mopping and all-purpose clean so I put a tiny bit in there to get rid of the stink and then I put in a like a cap full of bleach because you don't want too much or it's going to eat a hole in your rags and the kitchen towels I've been putting in the wash um, because we're using those big front loaders at the laundromat and you have to go do laundry night because I'm way overdue but you know the holiday weekend and everything we didn't have a chance so um, sometimes I will soak these in in a mixture like this just to make sure they're really clean um, and then wash them afterward with some really well so they don't get anything else uh, bleached up. And I have, these are, um, these I got on Amazon and they're like a, it was like a six pack and there's 
two of each color, red, blue, and green, um, Aunt E's or something like that. And they're pretty good at absorbing. But the best one I found were, were at the Dollar Tree. This one, I have another one like it in blue, and they're gigantic. Not quite as big as a sackcloth, but they're super, super absorbent. So we went back, and Robert actually found and goes, how about these? And I'm like, they look pretty good. And I got them home and used them. He had a good instinct for the right thing. Usually he won't touch anything in the store. I'm like, feel it, feel the velvet, feel the cotton, feel it, feel it. And he's just like, can we get out of the store now? He wants to go because I'm like, I want to stop and look at everything and touch it. Especially like stuffed animals and soft things. And I'm like, look, look. And he's just not, he's not a girl. So, and he's just not touching things like that. Unless it's guy clothes and maybe he will. Maybe he'll go, oh, that's good quality. Um, but the other thing I have is this is a strawberry hauler and I don't think I used it yet I forgot I had it found it in the drawer when I was looking for my my pie server the other day also purchased at the Amish store they have a lot of old-fashioned things and I got these really cool um, metal Oneida um, teaspoons they had Oneida metal um, Piton, those things, measuring cups, yes, measuring cups, sorry, I'm over 50, <laughs> I suffer from CRS, can't remember stuff, and, <clears throat> but the edges were wicked sharp, and I didn't want to, I thought, the first thing I thought was, I'm going to cut myself on these measuring cups, but these are not, see, they're more, they won't cut me, and I don't like being cut, I don't like it, so, you know, I'm just not into that, anyway, um, and I have this I got at a yard sale. I have a couple of these. These are just, you know, it's like a little pizza wheel, but it's to cut um, shapes out of pie dough and things like that. And that, that kind of stuff can be handy if you're doing fine work, which I don't often do, but I imagine that I will someday be an expert cutter of pastry stars and leaves and things and be very artistic, right? Right, okay. And so, the other thing I use a lot are these little teaspoons. It's, I guess I'm not a spoon expert, but um, it's it's probably what maybe what you call a demi toss. I'm not sure. It's a teaspoon, and they're little compared to big teaspoons. See, and what happened was I went to United Kingdom, and I was at the airport, and I had some pounds left, and I was buying souvenirs, and I bought myself a beautiful. Um, English pottery um, milk pitcher with the flowers on it, you know, porcelain, not, not pottery. And it's my favorite thing. It's in a box somewhere, and I love it. Um, so they, these, I had, there's, I have like six of these, and they're in, they were in like a little box with plastic on top, souvenir gifts. So I bought them because I loved, you know, at all the bed and breakfast, they would give you, you know, tea or coffee in the morning, and they had these little spoons and. We don't. We normally don't see those in the U.S. We see at a coffee shop. We see a normal size, larger teaspoon, and I'm like, it's cute. It's so tiny. I like tiny things. So I bought them, and I do use them um, for things like serving out spices when I'm uh, measuring spices, so I don't get too much. You know, dump the whole thing in like half a pound of curry. But the next time I went back, I, I went to um, a department store in Oxford. I was in Oxford, and my partner at the time was into photography and was like, wanted to go and look at all the old buildings and take black and white photos, and it was very arty. And I'm like, boring. <laughs> you know, I like architecture, but it was the last full day there. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm going to go shopping, buy some souvenirs. Because um, we'd already been to, like, the Ashmolean and touched the prints of Julia Margaret Cameron and that was wicked cool. I love art. I'm very much into it. But it was, you know, I had to buy souvenirs for my my nieces and my daughter and people back home and like little stuffed lambs and all the really cute stuff um, that they have there. And I like stuff like that. So I went to the department store and I found a whole set of these teaspoons for like you know like two pounds or something. And I use these a lot. So if I'm measuring like Coleman's mustard, which is wicked hot, I'll use something like this or this. So so little tiny spoons like this can be really handy when you're measuring spices or things like mustard. 
and I just have to be careful not to let them fall down in the drain. Some drains, they will fall down all the way, and some they'll just, the handle will fall down, but I have to be careful and put them in a bowl or something to soak before I get my dishes done. And I save jars because sometimes I use them for stuff. My my brother, the one that just passed away, was a, was an adamant, was adamant about not saving jars because my mom, my mother grew up during the Depression, more or less. She was born in 1932. And she saved everything. She saved tin foil. She saved plastic bags and washed them out, which I might if there's nothing nasty that's been in them. But if it's something nasty and greasy and meaty, I, I won't save it. I will throw it out or put it in the recycle because we have free recycling here. So, <clears throat> ah, excuse me. It's so damp and foggy today. Look at that. You see it? It's really damp out there. So many sinuses are acting out. That's why I sound funny. So anyway, I, I am starting a new jar collection. <laughs> Don't tell my brother. Ghosts will come to haunt me. I have up in here... It's a mermaid. Yum, I like mermaid. Okay. And <clears throat> these are... This is pickled limes. And all it is is salt and cut up limes. And I've got another one in a, in a tomato sauce jar. This has been in there for like two, at least two or three weeks. <clears throat> and this is, um, these are pickled lemons and probably a couple limes. Um, cause I had a bag of them and they were, they were sitting in the fridge and I thought, oh, they're gonna go bad. So what I do is once in a while I'll shake it upside down. And I saw this on a Martha Stewart video, but I had a girlfriend when I worked at a big company in Chicago who was from India and she was always saying how pickled lemons were good and they would give them to women if they were had morning sickness and you could use them in cooking and I never try it so I saved a jar and I had to put something in it useful. <laughs> um, we were at this party the other night and the guy had a gigantic cooler full of lobster so we came home with two cooked lobster. I just thought you know we really don't eat a lot of lobster. My husband ate too much of it as a kid when he came up here on vacation in the summer. And I used to eat it all the time. lived in uh, Massachusetts near the coast. Um, but it's a lot of work picking lobster. <laughs> and if you buy the meat, it's like 35 bucks a pound without the shell. So sometimes we'll do it and sometimes we won't. And But anyway, I just thought you'd like to see some lobster. She's like, hi, hi, I'm Mr. Lobster. And so... Um, I do have a lobster cracker, but I usually give it to Rob because he's got big, strong hands and he's got really long fingers. So, <laughs> he's my lobster cracker. He's really good at picking meat. So, I, I could do it, but he does it for me because he's nice. So, the other thing I have is a meat pounder. I just got this, like, within the last six months. I never had one. We used his rubber mallet <laughs> from his toolbox with wax paper to pound out the chicken breast, but it was getting them too pounded, like with holes in them and wasn't working. And this is Nick at it. This is something fun I found for a buck. <laughs> I was gonna send it to my granddaughter and Robert's like, no, you need to keep that. That is you. And I'm like, but it's her too. And he's like, well, you should have bought two of them. And I'm like, well, no, but. <laughs> There's like 50 million people on YouTube putting these things in front of their face and doing that, you know. So, and then I realized this morning my nails are, look like crap. And I found this, this cuticle eraser, so I, I did, I worked on that. And, um, oh God, sorry, my son is, and I found some gold, what's this, Revlon at the discount store and it says two dollars on it but they were actually a buck and so I'm gonna try to do my nails because I I'm very self-conscious that my fingernails don't look that great and I'm pointing at stuff you know and <laughs> so I got this email I want an email list for this place called pure wow it sounds really good pure wow but <sighs> it's like a lot of junk they want you to buy but it did give me the tip that gold is the in color for fall. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't do my fingernails a lot because I'm cooking and I'm cleaning. But once in a while, I want to look pretty. 
<laughs> you know, women in Maine don't wear makeup a lot. Most of them, most of them, 